Gun violence is a problem across this country that people wish they could solve. A group of sixth graders right here in San Antonio is committed to making a change by documenting how gun violence is impacting their community. Tonight, our Stephen Cavasso shows us how students at Booker T. Washington Elementary see the east side through their own lens. As journalists, it's our job to bring you the news, whether it's good or bad. And camera phones like this can help us bring you the headlines. But here on the east side, it's more than just the headlines. It's a community. And students here at Booker T. Washington Elementary School are getting a new point of view in a place they call home. Right now, it's just the basics for this group of sixth graders as they learn how to capture a moment. So there's a better chance that I'm going to be shaking it. Right. Their teacher, Francisco Cortez, tells me moments can be defining. Well, some were born here and they live here and they represent here and, you know, nobody knows it like they do. I think a lot of people in the, in the city don't really have an idea of what's going on, on the east side, period. Um, you hear it a lot through, you know, watching the, the news. Yeah, and unfortunately, a lot of that's going to be negative. Cortez says these students want to shatter that stigma. He calls them the light catcher society. They document their world and honor their community one picture at a time, hoping to shift perspectives, share the stories of their community, develop their voices through photography, poetry, and advocacy, collaborate with city leaders, nonprofits, and even artists. Every year, a group of new sixth graders pick up a camera and learn how to tell a story through their own lens. And in a few months, these students will begin to take pictures with a purpose. special project as yeah. the line surrounding yeah. uh, guns. Correct. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. So the students, you know, decided to, to document that and not in the sense of how, you know, dramatic and violent it actually is, but the, the effects of it besides the obvious, you know, how it affects people's mental, mental health. Photograph them aside from their neighborhood, but sit down with them, create an interview that was specific to that person, uh, and then also record that. I was actually um, a victim of gun violence. And when I was 15 years old, I was actually shot 15 times in one incident. I'm very, very aware of the trauma that is associated with it. Folks range from victims of gun violence uh, themselves, people that had lost you know, children to gun violence, police officers, uh, people that work for organizations that, that counter you know, gun violence. These portraits were displayed at an exhibit last year. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg attended the exhibit and the students were able to discuss that plan with him. Last year, students suggested documenting gun sales, data tracking the first month, more classes on responsible gun ownership, more safe storage programs. Gortez says that is the real mission of the Light Catcher Society. It's getting the kids to care about different issues in their community and take action. People always really want numbers. You know, how, how successful is this program? Give me numbers, numbers, numbers. Um, but it's really hard to quantify the change that, that is made. And, and the idea is to plant that seed so that one day maybe they can create some type of change, whether it be through the photos or something they do later on in life. But at the same time, make them aware of these issues so they don't fall into these traps that exist you know, for them. Okay, I got it. So you said you've been taking pictures for a long time. Yes. Especially because my mom, she always wants me to take pictures of her, so <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at the pictures. <laughs> so you enjoy the class? Yes, I do. Sasha Harris has a passion for her neighborhood. She tells me she wants to highlight the beauty of room, San Antonio's and east I just side. Love I like it because we're able to be outside, be in the fresh air, and able to talk to people and tell them like their history or their culture in San Antonio or the east side. While there's no easy solution to gun safety, kids like Sasha and her class are trying to shed light on how it impacts their neighbors while shifting perceptions from negative to positive. You can scan this QR code and tell us what issues you want us to address or what creative solutions you've come up with. Subscribe to the Solutionaries channel on Facebook to catch all our coverage. We'll be right back.
The federal government will remain open. The White House says that President Joe Biden has signed a stopgap funding bill. It's the result of intense bargaining and voting in the House and Senate. The bill provides tiered funding through January 19th and February 2nd. That means without a deal, the shutdown clock will resume in the new year. The FDA says it is screening shipments of cinnamon from other countries for possible lead contamination. The announcement comes amid a number of reported illnesses linked to potential lead contamination in recalled fruit and applesauce pouches. The FDA says it believes cinnamon used in those pouches may be the source of the contamination. Today, the FDA says it received 34 reports of illnesses linked to apple cinnamon fruit puree pouches sold under the Wana Banana, Weiss and Schnucks brands. Cases have been identified in 22 states. The products sold at retailers including Amazon, Dollar Tree and Sam's Club. With the holiday season right around the corner, daily schedules can fill up fast with shopping, cooking, meeting with friends and family. And many times all these activities can be a source of joy, but for some it can also be overwhelming and impact your mental health. Ivan Rodriguez with how people can make the best out of the holiday season. The holidays can provide a sense of gratitude, hope and love for many, but gatherings can also create a mixed bag of emotions. The holidays is a time that people really put a lot of pressure on themselves to make sure everything is absolutely perfect. About 64% of people with mental illness report holidays make their conditions worse, according to a study by the National Alliance on Mental Illness. The Alliance recommends a few steps to manage your stress including maintaining realistic expectations and prioritizing self-care. We have to be really mindful, I think, about what our boundaries are going into these holiday events. For others, the stress of the holidays can be tied to painful family interactions and memories or dealing with isolation and spending the season alone. One of the things that's really important that I like to talk with people about is how to make a decision on what's actually best for us, right? Sometimes we need to um, push out of our comfort zones, but sometimes we need to honor that it's actually not the right place for us to be. Experts say although everyone's holiday situation is unique, it could be beneficial to break from a traditional family gathering or habit. It's a wonderful time to start your own traditions that feel like really uplifting for yourself. Go to yoga on you know one of the holidays or volunteer at a soup kitchen, something that helps you feel part of a community or connected. I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. I bet it's going to be a busy weekend with last minute preps before the Thanksgiving holiday and weather, of course, will play a role in all that. Adam. Absolutely. Yeah, it was nice to have a beautiful sunset this evening. I'll share a few more of those uh, photos with you that were posted to KSAC Connect. That's what I love that flow from the Pacific above us aloft. You get the mid and high clouds moving in and you can, you can get some beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Right now, we're 75 degrees. We'll drop to 65 at 9 o'clock, midnight at 60, and then tomorrow morning, 58. Not a big temperature drop considering a weak cold front is moving through right now. We'll talk about the next cold front to hit, which arrives on Monday in just a bit. A 17-year-old is in police custody in connection to a stabbing at Lee High School last week. We're choosing not to name the suspect because they are a student at that school. SAPD says the suspect stabbed another student walking in the hallway on November 6th. The suspect is now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The Salvation Army looking for a new distribution center for its Angel Tree program. Officials say the one they were planning to use fell through right when they're about to move in. The Salvation Army hoping the business will let them use their space for the time being. They need a place to set up. The Angel Tree program helps more than 6,000 San Antonio children every Christmas. We have an update on the Pedro Romero pedestrian bridge on Castroville Road on the city's west side. The city's public works department tells us the bridge will be totally demolished. A dump truck crashed into it earlier this year, damaging and damaging it and knocking down the bridge part. But the city left those ramps. They don't go anywhere now. We highlighted this issue in our Know My Neighborhood series featuring Westwood Square last month. And that's your 60 second recap. Glad to hear they're doing something about those ramps to yeah, nowhere. Yeah, they just up there in the sky, not doing anything. Yep. 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 All right. Hello, Adam. <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy yeah. Friday. All right. I don't you like Fridays. You said there's like a, yeah, I know because it's not Thursday. But. Six more days of thermometer Thursday. Oh, yeah, that's what we're all yep. thinking. Had to let you get that in there. All right. <laughs> so you're liking the way the wind's blowing right now. I am. 
I think it's good. You know, that upper level wind coming in off the Pacific gives us the high and sometimes mid level clouds. And those are the best for picturesque sunsets and sunrises. Here's another shot from this evening from one of our wonderful KSAT 12 viewers off in the countryside. You can see the nice sunset and here's another one. Floresville fire in the sky. Love this one as well from Floresville. And then I showed you this one earlier. God's country. Love the backyard sunsets, especially in this situation. Good stuff. You can access KSAT Connect via the K via our KSAT Weather Authority app or even just on our website. So there's a very weak cold front moving in. It's hard to tell. But it's there. The wind's shifting out of the north here. Hill country, northerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. And then closer to the Gulf Coast, you've got that wind coming out of the southeast. And where we have the wind shift, that's this very weak cold front that's moving in. It's just going to shift our wind out of the north here in a couple of hours here in San Antonio to 10 to 15 miles per hour and drop the humidity a little bit. Notice high temperatures not really affected by that front today. 80 the high in Kerrville, 78 Fredericksburg, 79 officially here in San Antonio, 85 for the high in Catula. A little bit cooler off in North Texas, but one of the main reasons for that isn't just the cold front, but particularly the cloud cover throughout the day. You look at the visible satellite imagery, Abilene was socked in, so 64 the high. Dallas, thick clouds all day as well, so 62 for the high temperature there, whereas elsewhere where we had the sun, most of us were in the 70s and 80s. Here's that flow off the Pacific because of the upper level high, the big blue H over Mexico and the clockwise circulation around high pressure systems. It's steering the wind and the upper level moisture from the Pacific through the desert southwest into West Texas and then even our neck of the woods. So that sets the stage for that beautiful sunset that we had this evening. Here's our next system. It's just west of San Francisco. Same system we've been talking about for several days now. It's just slowly moving eastward and it's going to continue to do so. Help to nudge a little cold front through on Monday. That'll be later in the day on Monday and park itself in the middle midsection of the country on Monday. And there's a little wild card with our overall upper level pattern that will affect Thanksgiving. Right now you see this little dip in the upper level flow that I highlighted with these arrows. This is a trough, a little weak disturbance. Really indications are that this is going to be progressive, move eastward and not have any impact on our Thanksgiving. However, we're watching and we're going to monitor for the unlikely scenario that this could pinch off from the main flow and sit here and spin as its own disturbance then it would introduce rain chances for Thanksgiving. Right now, we really think it's still going to be sunny and dry. That's just what we're watching, what we're thinking of when it comes to our Thanksgiving forecast. So check back for the latest. And of course, we'll let you know if, uh, right away if we ever get on board for rain chances Thanksgiving. But right now, we're keeping it dry and actually looking pretty sunny. 10 to 20% chance of showers Sunday and Monday. Last week's drought monitor, okay, look at the red here by the Gulf Coast. Compared to this week's, we've had improvements, but obviously we need more rain. It's just not really in the works right now. Tomorrow we start the day at 58 by the afternoon, upper 60s. Pretty much the same story on Sunday. 50s in the morning, near 70 in the afternoon. And the next week behind that front, windy on Tuesday. And then Wednesday through Thanksgiving, some cool mornings in the low 40s. How about that? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Adam. The Buzz coming up next. To the buzz and realism wasn't one Las Vegas eighth graders goal for her newest prosthetic hand. Haley's new hand modeled after F1 driver Fernando Alonso. It's extra special because like her, he has Poland syndrome. That's a condition where babies are born without a pectoral muscle. For Haley, it also meant that her hand didn't form fully. A former grad student at UNLV 3D printed the prosthetic for her. It is one of 40 that Haley now has that represent different sports teams. Yeah. Okay. The colors for Fernando Alonso right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now you can eat even more chicken. Chick-fil-A is rolling out its new drone delivery system. Right now, though, only available in a few locations like this one near Tampa, Florida. Who says chickens can't fly? <laughs> Customers can request the service through the Chick-fil-A app, but drone delivery is only available during certain hours and only within a certain distance. No word on if the cows are actually operating the drones. Mm, hope not. Eat more chicken. <laughs>
A Philadelphia radio station will not be playing Taylor Swift's music this weekend. Q102 has banned Swift's music as it prepares for Monday night Super Bowl rematch between the Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs right here on KSAT. Now, even though she is a native of the Philly area and a noted Eagles fan, as we all know, Swift is dating Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey. Yeah, she's been supporting her man at Arrowhead Stadium recently. Seems Taylor has picked a side with the Chiefs. So the Philly radio station choosing the birds for the weekend, not the Swifties. Mm. This weekend, mornings in the mid upper 50s, afternoons right near 70 degrees, and I think a little extra cloud cover in the sky than what we've had in a brief stray shower possible Sunday and even Monday. Notice our morning temperature trend going down. You'll really feel the chill in the air again returning on Wednesday. At that point, we've got low temperatures back down in the lower 40s and that goes for Thanksgiving as well. So Thanksgiving will start the day cool at 42, but then by the afternoon sunny in 64. I will be doing light the way at the University of the oh, Incarnate Word tomorrow night. That's so right. now I know how to dress. I saw one tree lit up when I passed by recently. Excited. Testing them out. Yep.